championship tradition continues. Georgia Southern football with Mike Seawalk. This week's highlights are brought to you in part by East Georgia Regional Hospital, compassionate care without compromise, Coca-Cola, always Coke, and by Huddle House Restaurants, any meal, anytime, 24 hours a day. Now, here's your host. Welcome to Georgia Southern Football 2002. I'm Brady Posk alongside Eagles head coach Mike Seawalk. And coach, we're up here in Cullowee, North Carolina today. It's kind of a discovery game for us. We're going to find out exactly how good Western Carolina is and more importantly, if we can extend our two-game win streak. Well, I think exactly right, Brady. We'll exactly see where Georgia Southern football is today. It's a beautiful day up here. This field, of course, the AstroTurf is different than it has been in the past, but uh, our guys had a great week of practice and we look forward to coming up here and putting on a good show today. Uh, I think our execution on offense has improved the last two weeks. I look forward to continuing, and then our defense is really starting to be a stellar force. This is exactly how we've expected it to happen in the past. Uh, offense has been rolling of late. Uh, how was practice this week uh, leading up to this game? It was well. It was organized. Those kids did a good job. We have to look at a couple different looks on defense that they're going to present to us, but uh, we did a good job with it, and I, I look forward to seeing how things transpire in the first, you know, the first eight minutes of football games are always the most critical, and I think that we can set a tempo early like we have in the past two games. Uh, talk about a little bit about Western Carolina today. Uh, what, what can we expect to see from the Catamounts today? Well, they have a great linebacker in Rod Dunlap, number seven. He'll fly from sideline to sideline. they got two defensive ends that are impressive, Michael Spicer and uh, the McNeil kid. Uh, the, both those guys come off the edge, and of course, him in the middle he is rather impressive. On, defense, on offense, they have a, a, a good offensive line, but they've got two great backs, and, Boateng, and Fred Boateng's had a bunch of runs against us the past two years, so uh, I have to see our defense if they can go ahead and stop the rush. All right, Coach, good luck today against Western Carolina, and when we come back, first half highlights, but first, it's the Coca-Cola play of the day. Welcome back to Georgia Southern Football 2002. Time now for the first half highlights of Georgia Southern versus Western Carolina. And Coach, it was hard to tell if we were in Statesboro, Georgia, or Cullowee, North Carolina today with the amount of heat here and the great fan support we had up here. Absolutely. It was beautiful. It was a beautiful day up here, and our, our fans up there were just the, the loud as could be, and they, were, they, let, they let everybody know they were here and who they were cheering for. Coach, uh, we won the toss, and we defer, and defense starts off nice. Uh, Cabral and Scott hold Botang, their, uh, their big running back, to a one-yard run, and, and then on third and nine, the gang stuffs Botang for a no gain and we take over on our first possession and here goes the offense. We'll start it off on third and five. Chaz the fake pitch and takes off for a big run down to the 27. There's a little bit of a counter option, uh, counter option right there and he broke out the backside and uh, we got the guard pulling, got the guy knocked down and Chaz split the defense and I thought after he broke that first line of tackles I thought he'd be gone but the backside and when you have that type of action that you have to outrun the backside safety and he wasn't capable of doing it not with the angle that guy had. Two plays later on second and 10, Jermaine Austin up the middle down to the nine yard line and then on second and goal from the seven, it's Jermaine from seven yards out for the touchdown and Georgia Southern takes an early seven nothing lead with 10.35 left in the first. It was a it was a good uh, series for us right there. We were outside releasing the tackle and we were getting a give read to the fullback. Austin and on was, the carry uh, stepped into some tackles. He could have scored a little bit earlier when he took it down to nine. He kind of got tripped up, but he wasn't going to be denied the next time. On our second possession, uh, we'll pick it up on third and three. Pitch it out to Zream and a huge 40-yard run down to the 24-yard line. That was just the beginning of Zream's huge day today. See, Walden showed up today. Uh, he, last two weeks, he, when we got the ball in his hands, he was very uh, productive with it. And again, when he got it, he uh, was he was running hard and he was splitting. And the other thing is, you got you had Mark blocking on the edge again, and Derek Owens blocking on the edge, and those guys are uh, starting to come together, and they're starting to gel, and they're starting to time it up just at the right time. I mean, we say it's a triple option, and we can say anybody runs it, but we do it a little bit different. And then on the next play, Chaz, the nice keeper with a blocking crew in front of him, gets down to the eight yard line on third and goal from the four. Chaz keeps it for three yards. And on fourth and goal, you decide to go for it from the one yard line. Chaz gets in to make it 14 nothing. A little uh, little gutsy call there on fourth and one. Well, I'll tell you what, we called timeout just, to cure, just uh, prior to that. And I called the kids over there. And I, well, I knew this is what we we're going to do. And we're a running football team. And I told them we're not, there's no doubt in my mind we're going for it. We're going to score. And because uh, you're up here, you have to go ahead and try to take their crowd out of it. And you got to make a statement. And that was a good statement. And then Western Carolina takes the ball on first down from the 47. They call pass interference on, I believe it was Keys, running with the receiver step for step. But that gives him a first down at our 27-yard line. 
However, the defense holds Stanton Horn to a 42 yard field goal and it's 14 3 with 250 left in the first there. Uh, that penalty again, that was a, you know, it's a bumping on both sides, but uh, it didn't go for us. Third possession. First play from the 19 yard line, the pitch to Mark Myers for eight yards. Then on second and two, Chaz, the pitch to Myers again for nine yards. And then on first down from the 37, it's the final play of the drive. Chaz throws the screen pass to Derek Owens, and Derek takes over from there for 63 yard touchdown to make it 20 to three. Great to see Derek Owens come up and get put his little stamp of uh, uh, approval on how the offense is going because he's done such a great job blocking for us. And it's great to have him in a situation where he catches the ball in open field running, and he wasn't going to be denied. First three possessions, three scores. Offense looking good early, and then the defense, after the score again, takes over. Botang on third and two held a one-yard run. It forces them to punt. Our fourth possession on second and four will pick it up on the 34-yard line. Chaz pitches to Myers, and Myers gets down to the 44-yard line. But on first from the 44, Chaz to Carl Kearney, 11-yard gain, and that was the end of that drive. But uh, offense still moving. We were going down the field pretty good right there, and we hit that out right there to, to Carl again. They're giving us some. They were soft in the perimeter, and so we were going to take advantage of the throwing game right there. And we were fortunate enough to get them sometimes on an island, so it worked out well for us. Defense really stepping up big in the first half. Western Carolina's next possession will take a um, set, second and seven. Eric Hadley's nice stop for no game, then an incomplete pass after that forces them to punt. Defense just had him stymied the first half. They were also throwing some licks out there. I heard Botang one time on our sideline when he got hit, he kind of gave a little bit of a grunt. And I was like, boys, them guys are coming to play today. Georgia Southern's next possession will pick it up on the third play of the drive. The pitch to Mark Myers for a first down. He gets to the 38, then two plays later, it's Chaz. Big touchdown pass to T.J. Anderson from 40 yards out to make it 27 to three with 7:04 left in the second quarter. Mark's play was huge because it was a third down play and we needed to get a first and he did. And then when T.J. Anderson did to the safety, wasn't right. He kind of stuck the guy and it, it was so wide open. And people will tell you all the time, you know, that's what we've been telling you, coach, short in the middle. But it very well, often can you get a guy on his heels like T.J. got his guy on his heels. Next, the defense steps up again on first down from the 42. Michael Ward stops Botang for a four-yard loss. Big play there. And then on the next play, on second and 14, Michael Ward and Matt Rio sack uh, Salento for the big loss. That forces them to attempt the punt, but they fake the punt, and an incomplete pass gives us the ball at the 49-yard line. Uh, what happened on that play there? Well, we, we, we were in safe, and we were doing a good job. We were covered two in our, or our reads, and we got our safety back in there. And then what happened to us is uh, our kids came off the edge. They were blocked, and he came off there, spilled it, and we got him tackled. And that was, uh, we kind of anticipated a fake coming at that time. We had our safe, we had our full defense in the football field. So we take over with good field position. Unfortunately, on first down on uh, Western's 15, Chaz fumbles, and uh, Western recovers at the 23 with a minute and seven left in the half. And uh, we go to the half up 27 to three, pretty much dominating the entire first half, though. With a chance to go ahead and put it away. We should have got that last touchdown. We talked about it in ha at halftime. We were disappointed in that. And, uh, if that's the only disappointment you got, then you're in a you're in a bind. Coach, look in the first half, and when we come back, we'll have second half highlights of Georgia Southern versus Western Carolina. But first, it's the Ask Coach question. Welcome back to Georgia Southern Football 2002. Time now for the Ask Coach question. And Coach, Rocky Deakle at the game today, all the way up from Garden City, Georgia, asks, if the bat carries the ball and goes past the line of scrimmage, then pitches it back to the quarterback, and the quarterback passes it, but he's still behind the line of scrimmage, would it be a legal pass? No, Rocky, it would not be a legal <laughs> pass. Once the ball's broke the line of scrimmage, it's a rush, and you can't go ahead and throw it forward. So it would be a running play, and then if you did do that, you'd have an illegal forward pass, and they'd have to mark it from there and be lost to that. But he's getting onto some of a, some kind of a trick play here. Uh, we haven't really gone into the, the bag of trick plays so far this year, but uh, we got some big games coming up. We have a bunch of big games left. I mean, we, through the first six ball games, and uh, we, I think we're where we are as far as the offense goes. So we just got to go ahead and keep uh, running off our bre running off our bread and butter play, running off 12 and 13, and coming with plays that'll uh, go ahead and accent it. 
All right, Coach, thanks for answering the question. If you'd like to ask Coach Seawalk a question, just email us at abc22tv.com. That's our website, and you can email us that and ask Coach the question. And if you win, you'll win a limited edition trading cards plus a chance to win an autographed Georgia Southern football at the end of the season. When we come back, we'll have second half highlights of Georgia Southern versus Western Carolina. Ask the coach and win big. Send in a postcard or register online at abc22tv.com with a question about the Georgia Southern Eagles. Then watch Sundays at 1 with Brady Fossick and Coach Mike Seawalk. If your question is selected, you'll win an autographed game training card and be in the running to win an autographed Georgia Southern game football. Register today. Then watch the action Sundays at 1 on Georgia Southern football with Coach Mike Seawalk on ABC 22. We're just trying to play our football, and uh, this week right here, we got to play at the best week of practice we've had all year. This is the best team we've seen. I've been waiting for that for about five weeks now. I mean, I've just been sitting there. It's just a lot of stuff built up in, in us. And I mean, I mean, it was a great play calling by Coach Seawalt. He, re he recognized what the defense was playing, and he, I mean, he just let Chaz go, and Chaz made some great throws. And I mean, we made the catch and made the plays, and we were just fortunate to score. Welcome back to Georgia Southern Football 2002. Time now for the second half highlights. And coach, we defer to the second half, get the ball back, and uh, really want to put a nice drive together to, uh, to put this thing away early. Exactly, Brady. We felt like, uh, you know, right before half, we kind of let one good away, and we weren't going to let it go twice. And I, I stressed to the kids in there that they, we got to go out here and establish Georgia Southern football for them so they don't think they can come back on us because they had such a great second half last week against Furman. I didn't want them to even think they could get back in the ball game. And we'll pick up that first possession of the second half on first down from the 29. Chaz pitches to Zareem for the 40-yard uh, gain down to the 31-yard line, and uh, Walden continues to have a huge game. Zareem Walden played big all game for us. Did a good job blocking, uh, got himself. He would have been open in one of the passes we ended up getting sacked on, but uh, he was he's, he's practices hard. He gives you 110% effort, and all that can do for you is benefit you on Saturday. Three plays later on third and five, Chaz goes up top. He had a great passing day today. Again to Derek Owens for a 26-yard touchdown, and there you have it. It's 34-3, to three, less than three minutes into the second half. It was great again to see Derek get open. Yeah, the, the defense gave us a little seam right there. Derek hit the seam, and uh, Chaz hit him in stride this time, and it looked like, like uh, execution. It was the same play we ran at earlier against Wofford and didn't get hit. So, I mean, it's, you're starting to see some de development by our quarterback and uh, our game's starting to go ahead and improve. Defense continues to dominate on their, their first play on their next possession. Aaron Whitaker picks off a Brian Gaither's pass and uh, we're at Western's 46 yard line, just like that again. Exactly, I was hoping, I told, I stressed the defense too. Williams it was our turn to get some turnovers. It's been a long season. We haven't had near as many turnovers as we had a year ago. We're, we're minus 10 at that point by the defense alone because our defense last year gave us a bunch of turnovers. When Aaron got that eight pick, I just knew we were going to go back down there and do it, and that's the first time that we really stubbed up there. And that happened on fourth and seven, the incomplete pass, and the uh, field judge kind of ignored a little holding on Carl Kearney there, and uh, kind of looked blatant. But uh... when they grabbed us, <laughs> I mean that's just part of the deal. And uh, you know, when, and when you're up like that, sometimes they, you know, I'm not saying I can't be in the officials' mind what happens, but sometimes they'll let that pushing and shoving go away. And when it's a tight game, they'll throw it. And w Western Carolina would uh, would counter after that on second and six. Uh, Salento, a 64-yard touchdown pass to Mike Banks, and uh, it's 34-10, Georgia Southern up with uh, 829 left in the third quarter, but still in control. Right, except our defense gave up the big play. Uh, uh, you know, we were all stressing that no big plays, no big plays, and, and lo and behold, for a we let our guard down just for one second, and there it is, and that's that happened. Uh, we can't let that occur. Offense gets the ball back, and on second, second nine, Chaz, another pitch to Z for a, a nice 15-yard gain there, but uh, three plays later on third and three. The pitch to Z is fumbled for a six-yard loss and we're forced to punt there. But Scott Shelton gets a nice punt away and uh, pins yeah. him down at the 16-yard line. Absolutely. Scott did a good job. Even though when he tried to punch down there and, and uh, John, Jonathan Wilkerson didn't get in the first half. But uh, that pitch by Z, I think it was another one where he saw so much uh, he saw so much turf ahead of him that he took his eyes off the ball for half a second. He was over there and he knew it and I knew it and uh, I, I let him know that I was too intense to let that thing happen to us. 
Defense would force Western into three and out. Offense takes over again and pick it up on third and three. Chaz, the run up the middle for nine yards and a first down to get out of a big hole down there early. Well, we're, we're, we're backed up again. We had to get ourselves out of that hole, and uh, Chaz finds a way to make some plays for us, and our fullback does some good things, but uh, we got it out of there, and then all of a sudden, you know what happened next. Unfortunately, Brandon Andrews fumbles the handoff. Western recovers on Georgia Southern's 28, and then on third and eight, it's Another 19 yard touchdown pass to Lane, and that cuts Georgia Southern's lead to 34 17, seven seconds into the fourth quarter. Exactly. Now you got to play for 14 Georgia minutes and 53 Georgia. seconds. Now it's not the football game that we were all accustomed to the whole time. Now you have to dig deep. And I, you know, I was really worried about our character. I was really worried about our maturity because, you know, when things are going good, it's easy to jump on the bandwagon. When things aren't going good, you got to look for your partners. And I was hoping that some of my partners would stand up. Georgia Southern's next possession, the big play here was on second and seven, with Chaz was sacked for a an eight-yard loss, and that forced us to punt back to them. And unfortunately, we had we had the receiver open again. We just got beat at the point of attack, and uh, guy had a nice swim move and got there and got in Chad's face. That's probably the first time that the, they put a lot of pressure on the quarterback too. Then third and goal from the one. Uh, the quarterback sneaks in for a touchdown, and it's a, we got a game again. Georgia Southern's lead down to ten, up 34-24 with 11-29 still left in the game. 11-29 was 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 the key point. I told our kids right there they got to go and get a touchdown. If they got a touchdown. Hopefully it would be a three or four minute drive and it would take the thing off and it would be seven minutes left in the game when, when uh, we gave the ball back to Western. Unfortunately, it didn't work out like that. Still a little shaky on our next possession. We'll pick it up on the first play, the pitch to Myers. He fumbles it. Luckily, he's able to recover it for a five-yard gain. Two plays later, Chaz, huge pitch to Z for a 55-yard run all the way down to the 17-yard line. Now. Absolutely. We came back and uh, ran, ran a triple. I mean, we were trying to find ways to get the ball pitched and, and really just run it. And Chaz was running it very well today. And uh, we got it on the perimeter. And again, it was Mark was down there, and uh, I believe Derek Owens was down there blocking for Z the whole way down there. And I thought Z was not going to be denied. I thought he was going to go the whole way to it. But he got it down there, and that was that was key. And then from that point on, it was uh, you know it was good hard football down there. Now we drove it down there. We were down there. We got the hard yards. Then on the next play, Chaz, a nice nine-yard run. Two plays later, first and goal from the three. Chaz, three-yard touchdown run, and we really needed that one bad to push, push the lead back up to 17. Up now, 41 to 24 with uh, just a few minutes left in the game now. He showed a lot of power in that one. He showed a lot of determination in there too. I wasn't happy with him sticking the ball out over the end zone like that, but I was happy with his body lean and getting himself down in a position where he had his knees bent and was pushing the pile back. Western takes over the ball again, and they, uh, they make their way all the way down to the 10 yard line on second and goal. But uh, Joe Scott lays a smack on the quarterback, forces a fumble, and Georgia Southern recovers at the seven yard line. A huge play there. Absolutely. You know, I, we keep saying bend but don't break, bend but don't break. Defense don't do this. Our defense, you know, we're down there, we keep preaching, hey, they're not in until they're in. And I thought that the, the, the drive before they scored that they also had a fumble and we didn't get it. But this one, the officials saw it the way we saw it. We got the ball back, and then from that point on, Georgia Southern's young offense took over. And Chaz Williams, with over five minutes left, pretty much uh, ran out the clock. He picked up two big third down plays, and uh, Eagles able to escape out of here 41 to 24 and uh, improve to 3 and 1 in the conference and 4 and 2 overall. Got to be happy with this win today. Up here, winning up here with, against this football team, which is a good football team. Uh, I'm very pleased with where Georgia Southern is at this point. All right, Coach, congratulations, Dan. When we come back, we'll talk about next week's game here on Georgia Southern Football 2002. Welcome back to Georgia Southern Football 2002. Coach, we come out of North Carolina, head back to Statesboro next week for a huge game against Appalachian State. And uh, remember the last time we faced App in the playoffs, uh, eliminated them, and I'm sure they uh, they want a little bit of payback at Paulson Stadium. Well, there's no doubt that App State will come down here and they'll bring their A game, especially if they have their A game two weeks in a row because they had a tough game this week against Furman. So it'll be interesting to see where they are. I really worry about Georgia Southern. I think that we're going to be uh, – we're going to have a good week of practice. I look forward to seeing it start on Monday and carry on through the week. And if we can go ahead and prepare and we get ourselves to, you know, find a scheme again that will go ahead and exploit some of what defense the app's doing to us because gosh knows they've got some great talent on defense with Josh Jeffries and JT Scovo. And those defensive ends are the best in the country, in the, in the conference, if not maybe in the country. And then uh, I know Joe Burchett's back playing quarterback for him. We do not look forward to seeing him down in Statesboro. But Eagles have now run off three straight and uh, looking very strong on offense. The defense has been looking great, and uh, there's got to be a lot of confidence on this team heading into that game next week, especially it being at home. Well, I believe so. I believe that the, I believe the Eagle fans will come out there and support our football team, and what we'll do is we'll see a good showing by 
our Georgia Southern Eagles, this new bunch of kids that are trying to find a way to win. Coach, congratulations today on the win, and we hope to see all the Eagle fans at Paulson Stadium next week for the huge showdown against App State. For Coach Seawalk, I'm Brady Posick. We'll see you next time on Georgia Southern Football 2002. Georgia Southern Football with Mike Seawalk. This week's highlights are brought to you in part by East Georgia Regional Hospital, compassionate care without compromise, Coca-Cola, always Coke, and by Huddle House Restaurants, any meal, anytime, 24 hours a day.